There's a huge change coming to the realm of real-time rendering in Blender. Eevee is getting a rehaul, and it's a big one. No, no, I'm not talking about cosmetic changes, I'm talking about huge rewrites in the code, resulting in some important changes in the way you work with this amazing real-time renderer. In today's video, I decided to give this Eevee Next a try and tell you what I've learned in order to prepare you for its arrival. At this point, I'm working in the 4.2 beta version, but the release of the official version is very close, set to July in fact, so it's right around the corner. First, let's have a look at the world settings, because here is where one of the most exciting changes resides. When you plug in your favorite HDRI into the world surface, right off the bat, you may find the lighting quite a bit nicer than in the previous version. However, wait till you see this, because in the settings here, and sun, and down here, you can now activate the shadows. Wow, right? Previously, it used to be that in Eevee, the HDRI didn't give you much lighting information, and you could only dream about it casting shadows. As a result, I compensated with using very strong spotlights instead of the HDRI. Now this is something else, isn't it? Let's go to the actual render settings of Eevee, and here you'll probably immediately notice that things have somewhat changed. Some menus are new, others disappeared. And now let me address the elephant in the room, the absence of bloom. In the previous versions, you had all sorts of these lovely settings for this effect, including size, color, intensity, and more. Bloom, however, was now moved to the compositor and put under the glare note. I guess it's logical, because the bloom is a compositing effect, and of course you have to make it active here. Unfortunately, in this note, most of the awesome settings are now gone, and so it cannot really match the previous bloom menu. Oh, well, it may seem like a trivial thing, but I really loved it in the previous version, precisely because it was so much better than these glare effects. And now, they've butchered my boy. Well, this is unfortunately one of the things that are a clear downgrade, in my opinion, from the previous version. Anyway, let's get back to the positive stuff, because, as you may have noticed, the lighting looks significantly better than in previous EV version. That's because, lo and behold, there is this ray tracing option, of course. In case you don't know, ray tracing is a technology that computes how light rays bounce around the world and create realistic light spreading. Previously, only cycles could do it, and it was very computational heavy. However, that has changed. Let's have a look in this example. I have a cube here, with a sort of window, and a spotlight shining through. The world itself is completely dark, so the only light in this scene is the spotlight. Well, previously in EV, you would only get this, and if you'd want to sort of simulate how light bounces around inside a cube, you'd need to add more lights like, for example, a point light here. Again, hardly ideal. But in EV Next, all you need to do is to activate the ray tracing option, and immediately you get this super realistic spreading of light, and you achieve great results with much fewer lights. In fact, often all it takes is just one. And what you can of course do is to decrease the resolution rate to get better results, increase the number of rays that are computed or their steps, and it will all give you less noise and more quality. But then you will, of course, encounter some slowdowns. Even in this first version, ray tracing is a big deal. Of course, EV Next retains all the awesomeness of previous versions when it comes to volumetrics. Something that would slow down any cycles render renders lightning fast here. But how does it fare when it comes to characters? As you can see, there is a problem now with the eyes. And that's actually something I haven't been able to solve yet. You see, for all my characters, I'm using these wonderful Auto Eye Asset by Lucas Falcao, and all I needed to do in Blender 4.1 was to switch on this refraction option here, and the cornea started refracting the light. This option is now gone, and apart from some mentions in the manual blaming the new thickness output for it, and suggesting to add value node of zero, to the thickness here, which unfortunately didn't work for me. Well, apart from this, I haven't been able to find any possible solution. This, in fact, may be a bug or some missing option, 
we'll see in the final release version. Anyway, if I now just hide the cornea, how does the render compare to the previous EV version? As in previous case, the engine takes so much more information from the HDRI and it spreads the light more naturally, draws nicer shadows from it, even makes it look softer, and the ray tracing actually helps a lot, even when it comes to human models. The light bounces simply add so much more realism. So while the 4.1 version looks very artificial, the 4.2, well, I could probably use this for a final render. And with some post-production, this could work. By the way, speaking of post-production, the compositor can now finally use your GPU, which you can switch here, and it makes everything so much faster. Oh, and last but not least, another option I was sorely missing was shader displacement in Eevee. That's now available as well. Not that much to it, you just plug your displacement map into a displace node and then the displacement socket of your material. And it works in real time. So, that was a very quick look at what's new in Blender's wonderful real-time rendering engine. And apart from some weird steps back when it comes to bloom and refractions, I'd say the developers are on the right track to make Eevee a really great looking renderer, one that could one day, well, yeah, even rival Unreal Engine. So go ahead people, give Eevee Next a try, you might be blown away by the results. Until next time, stay creative my friends, Martin out.